Managing multiple machines isn't easy. It's like a constant juggling act. You're hopping from one computer to another, managing a mess of cables, and having to set up and take down your workspace over and over again. But it doesn't have to be this way. With the good old remote desktop technology, you can simplify all of this. Whether you're running a small business or managing a home office or even just tinkering in your home lab, today I will show you how to use remote desktops to and from any OS. We'll cover how to connect to a Windows PC, a Mac, a Linux computer from basically any other device, and even how to access a VM. It's all a very, very simple and easy solution. And speaking of easy solutions, today's sponsor is on point because what they offer is a remote desktop solution. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, the container streaming platform that lets you stream any OS, desktop or app to your web browser. And they've been working on implementing one of the most community requested features, translations. Now it's a developer preview for now and Chasm would like you to give it a shot and provide feedback on how well things work. They will automatically use the language and the time zone of your web browser in any OS, desktop, terminal or app you're streaming. Or you can set the language and time zone manually from your profile if you prefer or if you use a VPN, for example. You can download that developer preview for free right now using the link in the description below. And don't hesitate to let Chasm know what you think about it. They're really focused on implementing community requests right now, so give them a hand. Now, you might be wondering, why do I need a remote desktop at all? And perhaps you have multiple PCs that you need to access frequently. Or maybe you need to access a Windows or Mac program from your Linux PC. You can also use this approach to access the contents of a virtual machine. And while a server typically doesn't need a graphical interface and you should not install one on your servers, some people might really prefer it. Remote desktops can give you access to that without having to keep a keyboard, mouse and display connected to your server at all times. Although seriously, please consider using SSH and only the command line to access your server and make it do stuff. Using a graphical user interface just really increases the attack surface for your server and it's just not super efficient in terms of resource usage either. But also, if you need to debug computers for family, friends, or for your company, a remote desktop can simplify things considerably. So how does remote desktop work? Essentially, it mirrors the contents of one PC onto the display of another PC, either through a dedicated app, a web browser, or the native capabilities of your operating system. In this setup, one of your PCs acts as the server, the computer whose contents you want to access, and the other is the client the computer you use to access the server and interact with it. The client sends input to the server, the server acts on it, and then sends the resulting image back to the client for display. And you can do virtually anything with remote desktops, apart maybe from gaming because the performance will not be there and the latency might make things pretty unplayable. Okay, so when it comes to remote desktops, there are two primary protocols, RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol, and VNC, or Virtual Network Computing. RDP is proprietary and comes from Windows, although there are open source implementations of it like Free RDP. It allows you to access the same PC from many different remote computers, and although it's a Microsoft creation, you can run it on Linux or Mac OS as well as Windows. Since it is natively implemented in Windows, RDP could be your best option if your goal is mainly to remote into a Windows PC. Technically, it also offers better compression, so you should have less latency and better performance using RDP. On the other hand, VNC is an open source platform independent protocol that works on any operating system. Like RDP, it lets multiple clients access the same server. However, it's generally less efficient than RDP as it doesn't compress things as much. And on top of VNC and RDP, today's sponsor creates their own sort of fork of VNC called Chasm VNC. It's also open source, it uses superior compression, it offers more security, and it allows server access from a web browser, so you won't need to install and learn a dedicated app 
to access your remote desktop. You will also find other protocols out there like Spice or X2Go and others, but generally the most used ones are RDP and VNC. So now you know what a remote desktop is, let's see how you can set one up. So we're gonna start with Chasm VNC. It's open source, it's free of charge, and you can download the server component from their GitHub page. It's packaged for various Linux distributions, including Alpine Linux, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Kali Linux, or Oracle Linux, all for ARM or x86 CPU. It doesn't have a server component for Windows or macOS though, so it's Linux only. But you'll be able to access the remote desktop on any computer, whatever the OS, because you just need a web browser to do so. Okay, so once the server component is installed on the PC you want to remote into, you'll need to use the command line. Simply run VNC server and you'll be prompted to create a user that you will use to log in to your remote desktop. Then you need to add that user to the SSL cert group with this command, sudo add group your username SSL cert. You'll need to reboot for that change to be taken into account. And afterwards, you can just run the VNC command again and you're all set. It will give you an IP address but just note the port that it's using at the end. Once VNC server is running, you can go to your client PC, you can open a web browser, any web browser, type the IP address of the server, followed by the port number indicated when you ran the VNC server command. I used it over my local network, so it was my local IP address followed by a colon and the port number. You will be asked to enter your login and password for the user you created, and then you're in. You'll get a nice sidebar with options to tailor performance, frame rate, compression, and more. And if you want to really get into the details, there is a YAML configuration file you can edit, either in slash etc slash chasm VNC, or you can have your own config file for your user in .vnc. If you want to remote into a Linux PC running X11, Chasm VNC is your best solution. It will work with any OS for the client. It's fast, it's fluid, it's open source. I don't think you can really do better. And if you want to set up various sessions for apps, operating systems, or anything else, they have Chasm workspaces. It's also open source and you can self-host it or use their service if you prefer. Now, Chasm VNC will only work if your server runs X11. If you absolutely want to use Wayland on the server or if you don't want to use a web browser to access the remote desktop, then you can also set up on Linux a general connection using VNC or RDP. If you want to remote into a Linux PC, most desktop environments have settings that let you enable remote desktop. In GNOME, for example, you go to the sharing page, then remote desktop and enable remote control. KDE has the KRFB app that allows you to share your desktop. In there, you can find the address you'll use to remote into that PC and you can set the user and password you will need to use on the client. Other desktop environments might have dedicated apps or settings that are located somewhere else. Just look for remote desktop or RDP or VNC in your app menu or your settings and you'll probably find it. And on the client side, all you need is either an RDP or VNC client. The connections app in GNOME and KRDC in KDE are probably the best integrated apps. Or you can use Remina, which works nicely with basically all remote desktop protocol. You simply type the address you got from your desktop environment settings, the username and the password, and you're done. In GNOME, for example, by default, it uses RDP, with the address starting with ms-rd as the protocol. It's pretty easy. Most desktop environments have this capability built in. There's nothing to it apart from enabling a few toggles. Just make sure that the firewall isn't blocking the RDP or VNC protocol and that the ports it's gonna use are not blocked as well. Now, if you want to remote into a Windows PC, your best bet is the RDP protocol, which is already built into Windows. To enable it on Windows 11, simply open the Settings app, click System, then Remote Desktop, and toggle it on. A pop-up will ask for confirmation, just click Confirm, and voila, you're done with the server-side setup. For added security, you can require the password of the current Windows PC user to enable remote access. Just click on the drop down next to the remote desktop switch, toggle on the security feature, and note the ports that you'll need to use. Do note that this only works if you're using Windows 11 Pro. If you're on Windows 11 Home, then this feature is not accessible, probably for monetary reasons or I don't really know why. There are methods to enable it in a Windows 11 Home, but they all look pretty shady and since remote desktop can be a big security risk if 
anyone else could access into your PC, I recommend you do not do that. And if you really need remote desktop, you look for an alternative solution, operating system, or upgrade to Windows 11 Pro. Now, on the client side, all you will need is an RDP client. For Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android, you have Microsoft's Remote Desktop app, which is available as a free download. And for Linux users, there's Remina, a free open source tool available on any distro through Flathub. No matter which client you're using, enter the IP address of the PC you want to connect to and the username. Then your server should appear in the list. Connect using the password of the account currently logged into Windows. And just like that, you can now access your Windows apps from any Linux computer, Mac, or even your mobile device. It's straightforward, it's efficient, and it gives you the flexibility to work from anywhere. Now, what if you want to remote into a Mac? Well, let's find out. If your server is a Mac, the process is quite similar. First, open System Settings, navigate to General, and then to the Sharing page. Here, enable Remote Management. You can choose which users can log into the Mac and even allow VNC viewers to control the screen with a password, which you can set up right there. The system also gives you the option to decide what VNC users can do on the Mac once they're logged into it. Next up, you will need a VNC client on the client PC that will access the Mac. Remina works great on Linux, and there are plenty of options for Windows as well, like VNC Viewer. Once you have that, just input the IP address and the username of your Mac's user. Here, for example, the username is Nico, which is the name of my user account on the Mac, and the password is none your bit. Once logged in, I can control my Mac right from my Linux PC. However, one thing to keep in mind is that performance can vary. Since the resolution on Macs can be quite high, you might find it's not as fast as you'd like. Now, what if you want to remote into a virtual machine? Well, some VM clients can definitely let you do that. For example, in VirtualBox, you have a remote display tab in the display settings of your VM. Now, to make sure this works, you will need to install the VirtualBox extension pack which you can download for free from VirtualBox's website. The link is in the description. Then in VirtualBox, you can click the Tools tab, then the little List button, and then Extensions. Here, click Install, then select the Extension Pack, and you're done. Now you can enable Remote Display in the VM's display settings. You need to make sure that the VM is running to be able to remote into it. And then on the Client PC, just create a new connection with the IP address of the computer that's currently running the VM, and the port that VirtualBox gave you, in my case, 5050. It uses RDP. It will then ask you for your login and password, use the credentials of your user account in the VM, and you should be good to go. Pretty easy here as well, and it gives you a lot of possibilities to run multiple operating systems and their apps on any other computer. You could just have a VM server running somewhere and remote into various VMs to access the various apps that you need. In my experience, the only platforms with consistent performance are Chasm VNC and RDP. Regular VNC, while functional, may not always give the best results. So whether you're trying to access your work PC from home to debug a family member's computer, or you just want to launch an application that's on another system, setting up a remote desktop isn't that difficult. There are plenty of options to choose from, tailored to a variety of needs. It's also a great way to launch an application or access a few files that aren't available on your current device or operating system. And while you can use it for video editing programs or graphic design tools running on another operating system and accessed on Linux, for example, don't expect to play high-end games at smooth frame rates. Remote desktops are not best suited for applications that require quick response times. But this video is well suited to this segue to our sponsor. If you've ever bought a computer shipping with Windows out of the box and tried to retrofit Linux on it to notice that, yeah, it doesn't work properly in every single aspect, well, I've got a solution. Click the link in the description below and buy something from Tuxedo. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. All the components in their devices are picked specifically because they're compatible with Linux and will run super well under Linux. And they have a huge range of devices that will cover every need and every price point, whether you want a laptop, a desktop, something for work, for gaming, a workstation, they have it all. They're all super customizable. All the laptops are openable, repairable, and upgradable, and they ship to most countries in the world. So if you want a good Linux experience the next time you purchase a computer, click the link in the description instead. Don't buy something that supports Windows. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. You can like, subscribe, turn 
turn on notifications, write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, you can also support it. There are plenty of links in the description below for Libra Pay, PayPal, YouTube memberships, Patreon, YouTube thanks. You know how all of this works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.